So like I said, welcome. This is the kind of the Lorex blogging webinar because we want to encourage you guys to blog your experiences, whether you've traveled or not. Uh, we find it really important. And we have been kind of bugging you all with emails saying, hey, blog, 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 blog. But we do recognize the, the fact that one, you guys are busy and two, maybe you've never blogged before. Uh, so we wanted to give you the 101 course just in case. So gonna jump into this. All right, so blogging, like I said, it's our 101 course, a, a better way to share the knowledge. And the the first thing that I, I want to ask you guys is how much why is this? Oh no. Oh, of course you're gonna be like that. Hmm, it's locked. Okay. Um in the chat, because you can't apparently look at this poll and I can't seem to. Oh, here we go. I unlocked it. Woo! Thank goodness. Thanks for all that. Um but uh if you guys saw in the chat, I actually posted the poll everywhere link if you want to go online, or you can actually text. Um, oh gosh. Let's start with just the link. I think you need to resend the link now that um, like other people have logged in. Okay. Anyone want to help reshare that link? If you can see the link, can you copy I and paste it? I resent it. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, but you can go on online and uh, just let me know, you know, have you blogged a lot? Have you on occasion never blogged once or twice? Uh, personally, I know before Aslo, I had never blogged ever. I mean, I have heard, you know, you should blog your experience. I had friends who were writing up their experiences in graduate school. Uh, I had a, a sister who hiked the Appalachian Trail and while she was hiking it, she was blogging. So I knew people blogging and it was always recommended to me, but I just never made that leap. And I'd like to say it was because I was busy or I didn't know what I was doing. But if I was being truly honest with myself, I just didn't care. I was like, well, I don't see it really benefiting me. Lovely to read other people's blogs, but how is it gonna benefit me? Uh, so that's why I had never blogged. And it seems like for you guys, it's actually a pretty nice split between some of you who have never blogged once or twice and on occasion. Uh, so hopefully, once we're finished with this PowerPoint, I will be able to convince you, one, that it, it will benefit you. Um, and that it's easy if you have concerns, but there is a benefit. Also, we are asking you as Lorex students to blog. It's actually a requirement that you agreed to when you uh, pretty much sent in your application and were accepted. So it's kind of forced on you. All right, so moving on. How do we start blogging? Well, you actually, it, the good news is it's pretty simple on what you need to use when blogging. Depending on your preferences, you might start with pen and paper, um, but eventually you'll transfer it to onto your computer and hopefully you'll grab a camera, whether that's actually like a Nikon camera or using the camera on your phone. But as you'll see in a later slide, images and graphics are going to be your friend. They are definitely desirable, eye-catching audience uh, grabbing. So pretty simple on what you actually need to start. And before I start going into the, all right, how do I blog? I want to provide you with the, the concepts of why blogging is a benefit to you. How can you benefit from it? You can say to me, I, I write all the time. I'm writing manuscripts. I'm writing, um, you know, for my students when I'm grading their lab reports, I have to write comments. I have to write emails to my 
professors that I'm working with and my committee members. I'm writing all the time. You don't have to tell me to write more. But the, the difference between blogging and what you're writing is the not just the, the, the complexity, but the, the creative thoughts. Uh, because blogging is somewhat more uh, personal. And I do apologize if my internet connection is finicky. But so some key benefits that you can see here, I am gonna read them. You know, it gives you some clarity of thought, putting what's in your head onto paper, not just, you know, your manuscripts and your research, but anything that happens to be going through your head about your experience uh, can really help you to understand yourself and your thought process, understanding why you're thinking what you're thinking. It improves your confidence because the more you understand about yourself, the more you can appreciate yourself. Yes, it improves your writing skills. I know writing, writing, writing is really important. And it can help you learn some new information, maybe things you didn't realize as you're doing extra research. Uh, maybe when you're getting clarity of that thought, you're going to realize, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was thinking that because of so and so. And it also allows you to transform your complex ideas, the, the research that you're doing into a more simple form. Uh, especially if your audience is a broad audience. And this is really important for you as a Lorex student writing for ASLO because your research is very specific to you. You know the jargon, your, your methodology can be complicated depending on what you're doing. But when you post a blog, it is going out to the entire ASLO community. You're not just talking to an oceanographer, you're talking to a limnologist. You're not just talking to a, a limnologist, you're talking to a phycologist. You, you get all those is names. The, the range of topics is so wide that you wanna make sure that you can transform your research and what you're doing into something a little bit more simple. And that is a skill, especially important when it comes to scientific communication, taking what you do and putting it out there for the general public. So Building on those skills is something that can benefit you, not just now in graduate school, but in your future careers. And you might say, well, that's okay. I'm not going to be doing scientific communication. And you're lying to yourself because you will be. In some manner, you'll be presenting your research somewhere at a conference, or you might be giving a talk at a middle school or high school. Um, so you will be doing scientific communication with a more broad audience with maybe not even science background. Because we want to help you, we had interns, uh, the Lorex interns in the past, who helped to write this document, the Lorex 2019 blog writing 101. It was actually an intern named Maha, you might know her. Um, and she did a fantastic job. We actually have posted this. We've sent this in an email. It's on Cooper. I'll send it uh, a link again, just in case you guys have misplaced it. But it's pretty much the, the whole written, I have it right here, all the written form of what we're going to discuss uh, right now, of kind of putting your mind at ease if you're having questions, uh, links, to websites to help you identify if your page is too jargony. Um, so I highly recommend looking at it if you haven't already, but we are gonna go into it right now. So it's all about the tips and the tricks. How do we make blogging easy and simple for you because your life is already filled with so much work. You got research, you got personal life, now we're adding on, oh, I gotta write something, I gotta blog. So how do we make it as simple and easy for you? When you're writing, we definitely want you to remember your audience. I was talking about scientific communication and it's very true when it comes to writing your blog. There are business blogs, there are personal blogs. For Lorex, it's a little bit of both. It can be personal, it can be about your research, it could just be about, um, the country that you're 
currently residing in. It could be about, you know, how COVID impacted you. But no matter what you're writing about, you have to remember your audience and who you're writing for. Um, and that will in turn impact your language and your tone, the, the jargon, how much jargon you use. We always want to turn those complex words into more simple ideas so that somebody from a different field could read your work. This isn't a manuscript going into a very specialized journal. Um, and you definitely want to think about, you know, sentence length. You know, keeping it short and simple, always recommend short and simple. I mean, we know as a technical writer in science, get rid of all the fluff and um, get concise. And that's the same with blogging. We want to keep it short and simple. Uh, and then you also want to be making sure that you have, are, are leaving, I guess, a, a relevant idea, something that your audience can walk away with saying, ah, yes, if there's one thing I remember when reading those works, this is it. The, the next thing is you wanna be thinking about the style and type of article that you are writing. And I find this to be the most important part for you as an individual to pick. I know for me personally, I liked to write my Lorex blogs as a personal story. I made sure that I was writing like I was talking to a friend. I would put in jokes and it wouldn't be the perfect grammar because I wanted to connect with my audience on that kind of personal level. While some of my fellow cohorts preferred a reporting style or an explaining style. So pick a style that works for you. You don't have to stick to one or the other if you want to try multiple, but you definitely don't have to do something that you don't like to do. We want to encourage writing and the best way to encourage somebody is to make sure that they're happy doing what they are doing. Uh, and the, the next biggest thing is getting started. We can all say, okay, I got a blog, but yeah, I do also have that manuscript to write. I have to grade those reports. I need to write that email and I have to take a test in a class that I'm still taking classes in. I've got all those other things and, and then blogging. And so I'll work on everything else. And then by the time you get to blogging, you might be exhausted or you just sit there going, is there something else I could be doing? I think I should do laundry right now. I have to wash those dishes. Have I called my mother recently? And you start to find excuses of why not to write. And we definitely want to, um, we want to help you get past that. And so what can you do? You can start to jot down any ideas. Uh, I see somebody did something in the chat and for some reason I can't see it, I'm sorry. I'll have to get back to the chat. Uh, once I'm done, I do apologize. Um, so jotting down ideas, maybe writing down a catchy title, something to grab your own interest. Maybe start putting images together that might tell your story. Um, so pretty much putting anything down just to start the process will encourage the process to happen. And breaking down this big task of write a blog into something that's a little bit smaller, write a catchy title, get my pictures together, jot down a paragraph, make it something that is actually achievable. We're not asking you to sit down and write a blog all in one go. Maybe it'll take you a few days and that's okay. It's whatever works for you to actually get started. The next thing, especially that I want to remind you all, and you might actually even notice as I'm telling you this presentation and kind of describing more, is we want you to use visuals. You know, it's really easy to just write and write and write. And you might even look at your writing going, I don't even know what visuals go with this. But as you can see in the visuals that I have presented, pretty much when it comes to memory recall, and what our brain processes uh, are focused on and what they take in really quickly 
is those visual cues and they remember it more. I don't really remember what that blog was about, but I remember this picture of them doing this method or they had something in their hand. And that's really important when it comes to calling your audience back to you. That was a really awesome picture. And now I've heard they've blogged again. I wonder what other pictures they've had for me. So the use of visuals is not just important to get the information across to your audience. It's also a grabber of grabbing their attention to make sure they're actually focused on your work and also to bring them back. So it's definitely all about those images. And even if they are nutty, weird graphics, I would recommend using them. If you go back to some of my blogs, I mean, I have gone into clip art and I've just used some clip art because I wanted to make sure that my audience wasn't just reading a paragraph or two of words, which is really boring, but they also got a really fun clip art image of a runner. Or there was a comic strip like you saw in one of my previous slides. I want you guys to be engaged. I want you smiling. I want you to remember something about this presentation and maybe one of these images you'll remember. The next thing is drafting that catchy title. Just like our images, we want to grab that audience. They have so much to do. They're scrolling really fast or you're posting on social media and they're scrolling through the social media relatively quickly. How do we capture their attention? Well, a lot of people like to use memes you know, or gifts where they can, you know, they look at something and they laugh and now they have to, now that they've stopped and we've grabbed their attention, they'll maybe read what the post is about. Same in that written word, we want to make sure that we get them to click on the link of our blog. How do we do that? We get a catchy title. And I have to say, I was trying to come up with a good catchy title for this webinar and I totally failed, totally failed completely. But when it came to my blogs, I was a little bit more on top of it. I made sure that just because my, my writing style was that personal, funny, goofy style, my titles followed that pattern because I liked my audience to laugh. And so I think I use one that's a quote. When I write um, discussion posts for my students, uh, we have plant reproduction. And I was like, let's talk about sex sexual reproduction baby you know like whatever you have to do to get that student to go wait wait oh i get what they did there okay i've grabbed their attention and now they're more willing to click on it and maybe do something with that discussion we want that catchy title yes we are scientists and sometimes we are going to be writing about science we might be writing about our methodology or actual uh, results or discussion and we might need references and if that's the case we're going to want to make sure that we're referencing the relevant literature that we're citing our work this should be a no-brainer for you all since you are wonderful scientists who are working on manuscripts you're referencing all over the place. Same goes for your blogs. If you're going to have something, definitely reference it. If you have to have jargon, make sure you are uh, identifying what that jargon actually is in simple terms. Um, but we want to make sure that one, if your peers in the field are reading your work, they can expand upon it. They can reach out to other literature that supports what you're doing or if it is somebody outside their field uh, or your field, they can figure out what's going on and where you're getting your information from, especially if you are talking really scientifically. The next one is, again, we would hope a no brainer, but reread your work before you send it to somebody else, make sure you reread it because if you don't, you might be sending something that is a little rough. We all write rough drafts. We remember in middle school and high school, we'd have to write 
a rough draft and then we'd send it to the teacher and they'd rip it apart. You're writing rough draft manuscripts, you know, draft two, three, final draft X, final draft, final, final, ZY, because it's constantly being polished. The first step before you get to be sending it to others is making sure that you haven't repeated yourself, that your grammar is as good as you can get it to be. And maybe even before you send it to a colleague, you send it to a friend. And that's what I would always tell my graduate students that I was uh, with when I was a graduate student. I still tell them to this day, your graduate students are your friends. Everyone wants to support each other. You should be sending your work to them to get their feedback before you send it to the professor. They're good. The professor's going to rip it apart no matter what. That's guaranteed. And so will your friends, I'm sure. But at least before you get to the professor, you've had not just your eyes, but somebody else's eyes. And I say that because I know, especially for me, when it comes to rereading my own work, I will read it and I'll read it and I'll read it again and again and again. And I will swear to everybody, this work is as perfect as it can possibly be. It is excellent and your eyes just won't see the problems anymore. You've worked on it so much. It's always recommended that you, if you're gonna write something, make sure you stop and you step away for not just like a few minutes, not even just half an hour, sit on it for maybe a day and then go back to it. I know when it comes to your manuscripts, it's really hard because they can be really long. Good news is blogs are typically shorter than manuscripts. So it won't take you too long if you need to reread it, maybe a day or two later, it won't take too much of your time. But it's definitely important when it comes to the editing. And the other recommendation, the final tip and trick is to read other blogs. And I'm gonna to get to show you a little bit of uh, the Lorex blogs. If you haven't read them already, I highly recommend just randomly scrolling and clicking on a few, maybe the catchy titles that capture your attention um, to see how others have written, what they're writing about, what kind of images are they using, what kind of language, um, because you will find, as this quote says, inspiration. You'll think of something that you hadn't thought before. Maybe you'll find an idea that you're like, wow, that looks really cool. I want to do that with my own blog. Pretty much anything that would um, expose you to more. I mean, when you're reading literature for your manuscripts, for your research, it's all about getting exposure to as much knowledge on your topic as possible, getting that variety of views because when it comes to discussion, you need to be able to call up different points of view. Uh, our research matches so and so, but you know, didn't match this guy over here. Why not? Well, let me figure out what's the difference. And that leads to future research. Same thing goes when you're reading other scientific blogs, getting different approaches, different views will lead you in a different future direction that you maybe did not realize you were going to take. And what's really nice in the document that was provided by Maha, there is a whole list of other blogs, not just our Lorex blogs, um, but other scientific blogs. And you're gonna see that uh, we also have a Knaus blog um, that I'm gonna point to because Brittany was a Knaus fellow and she had to blog. I'm gonna give her a second or two to, or a minute or two to talk about that. So definitely expose yourself to a variety of other writings. So now I want to I want to show you the examples and the first one I'm going to show you is the Lorex blogs just because um, obviously you guys are Lorex fellows you can kind of get an idea of what um, Lorex students were writing about how they were writing. Um, so I'm just gonna get out of here. Boop, boop, boop. Going to stop sharing, but then I'm going to share again because I want to share my screen this time. So here we have the, the Lorex blogs where you can go to aslo.org, you go to who we are, we got the Lorex blog, science blog, publications, editorial, all that. I went to the Lorex blog. 
uh, and you can sort based off of, you know, if you're clicking on a certain link, we can see everything that's associated with the Southern Cross Lismore. Um, we can go all the way back to this one where we can get Dalhousie. Um, yes, I, Umea, you know, so on and so forth. You can go back through time and see what uh, individuals were writing about. And I just want to show you a variety of titles. So here was somebody writing about where they were located. This was getting warmed up, save early and often, traveling light. Yeah, right. You know, something catchy, something to grab your audience. If I'm going to read a blog post, I want to make sure I'm reading something cool, like Happy World Sea Turtle Day from Australia. What? That sounds awesome. I feel like I should read more about that. Can you spot the difference? If there's one blog, I want to show you how you can have a variety of different ways of writing. Here was somebody's blog. This is it, where they had a video asking you, can you spot the difference between these two shots? And then talking a little bit about what you're actually looking at. And I think that's incredible. I personally had never thought about doing this type of blogging. Instead, I was definitely more about, um, here, here's one of mine, balancing life and work. Not a truly catchy title, but I tried to make sure I was a little bit more engaging, asking questions. I got some lovely pictures in there. Don't judge my face. The group I was with, you know, trying to capture everyone's attention with pictures, um, having some more, you know, bold and all caps image um, writings to make sure that my audience wasn't getting bored or if I was making sure they wanted to read something. I was trying to really draw their attention to it in some manner. So it's a different way of writing for me compared to what Wiley did. Um, here we have Hannah from, she was in Australia and she didn't happen to have any pictures and that's okay too. It's to each their own, of course. You're gonna write different from how I write and I hope so because your writing style is a reflection of you. Um, so if you had no pictures, that doesn't mean that the blog is no good. It's definitely still good. And the people reading your blog, they want to know, they want to hear. I love that this individual told us how to pronounce things, <laughs> how they were going to add some photos, <laughs> but pretty much being real with their audience. So. I want to make sure that you guys recognize one, this is available to you, that you can get a variety of ideas. Um, the next one where I, I'm going to just stop sharing my screen and allow Brittany to talk a little bit is the Canals Fellowship. So the Lorex blogs are not just for, you know, Aslo. We hope that you share them on social media so people see what you're doing. Um, but your writing mainly is posted on ASLO so that ASLO's members can see them. With the Canals Fellowship, Brittany, do you want to share like why you were doing, um, why you were doing the blogs there? Sure. I mean, so I'll just say that um, you know it's a very similar idea behind why the Lorex program has blogs. Um, you know, there's there's the benefit to um, the next a group of students or interested parties in um, seeing what the program is all about. And so there's the benefit to the program um, to write a blog. But um, I'll just add to the benefits to you that I, I already went through. Um, as someone who's um, like a step or two ahead of you all in, in your career, um, the more different types of experiences, professional experiences you have, I've really found that having these blogs to go back to, um, to read about, you know, how did I feel when I did this, you know, this trip or this experience? Um, those are really good records for you to have and to help you kind of fi find through lines throughout your career. 
Um, so as you go on, having these blogs is, yeah, it's a benefit to ASLO and it's a benefit to the Lorex program and, and all the other students who are, are looking at you to see if, if this is something they want to do too, but it's really good for you as well. Um, and then as someone who's spent a lot of times applying for jobs outside of academia, just one other benefit is that a lot of, a lot of job interviews, they, they ask for writing samples, different types of writing samples. And if you're applying for a job that's not research heavy, you know, you're going to want some other type of writing that shows that you can communicate science to a broader audience. And then just having those blogs, they like link right to the ASLO website. This is a blog that I wrote and there's your writing sample. So, um, I just wanted to add those other couple benefits about blog writing and Ilea, you did such a good job um, going through some really great tips. Um, those are all the same types of tips and tricks that the Knaus um, uh, mentors uh, gave us. And so you hit the nail right on the head there. Um, so turn it back to you. Awesome. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. I swear we're almost through the PowerPoint and then we'll open it up for, for questions. Um, the last bit I want to make sure you're all aware of is like, what's, what's the plan? How do we move forward? Other than, yes, we want you to write. We want you to write a blog post. We want you to write multiple blog posts. Of course, you're going to have the, the blog post of, you know, before travel, during travel and after travel. Um, but we hope that you write maybe a little bit more than that. I think I ended up writing, uh, six or seven posts. Some people did three, some people did five. It's whatever you are comfortable with, but we definitely want to encourage you to write. And then once you're done writing, uh, we're asking you to send it to myself or the communications because we wanna make sure that you have that review and edit stage where uh, not only your friends get to view it, but we get to view it right before we put it on uh, ASLO's website since we are the ones that have to do that. And then once we have it um, edited and we'll work with you, if you, we need to edit it uh, in a great detail, sometimes it will just be change a few words here. Or maybe I'll ask you to send another photo if the quality wasn't that good. Um, however much review you need or want, uh, that's what that stage is for. And then we have the sharing on social media. Once it's up, we want to share it not only on Aslo's social media, but we would hope that you would share it on yours as well if you have, uh, and really get that, that information out there. So we've reached the end of like the, the training, the tips and tricks. Uh, I am going to have one more slide on uh, what ideas, which we've, we've emailed you before, um, but right here is a, another poll everywhere question where I'm asking you to rate today's training. So you can go to the same website if you used it, or you can actually text 37607, that was the number I couldn't remember, using the code ILEANOT680, and then a, B, C, D, or E. And these, you know, it's all anonymous. I want you all to know, we don't know who's writing this. You can say you're frustrated that you don't want to do this. Uh, if you're, you know, whatever you're feeling, you know, just be honest one with us and be honest with yourselves uh, because I know I am definitely an, an exciting individual and I want to get you excited, but you might not be excited and that's okay too. So definitely, I appreciate everyone who is participating on these poll everywheres, which also is not required. But it's always nice to see kind of where your headspace is at as a group in general for me. So I know whether I have to get more excited and be like, oh, blogging is amazing, or whether I got to cool it down and be like, okay, they're, they're hyped up. All right, I can, can bring it back down a little bit. Um, I'm glad that some of you are really excited, ready to go. I'm happy to see somebody's maybe, you know, people are a bit more comfortable and it's definitely okay to be nervous. I mean, I was nervous when I started blogging for the first time. And I mean, like, uh, I definitely understand if you feel like maybe you can't write, maybe you feel like you're going to get judged and you're not, this is definitely, um, a space for you to just be yourself. And, uh, I hope that puts a little ease in your heart. With that, I definitely want to say thank you 
to all of you who have attended and participated. I hope I did hype you up. Um, and before we go to the questions, I want to make sure that we want you to write now. We, we don't want you to wait till you're traveling. We want to hear from you. And I know we've bugged you with emails, so I'm just gonna kind of bug you some more now that I have you physically present on uh, giving you some ideas of what you could write about like right now. You could leave this training and be like, all right, cool. I'm gonna write about something. You could write about how research plans changed. Maybe you're doing your research remotely already. It's all online and you're changing your project or maybe your research plan because the, the months that you were going to travel have to change, that will change your research plan. Maybe they haven't changed at all. And why haven't they changed? I'd like to know that. Um, whether you've been able to do any work virtually, has it been or is it just you know, limited communication? How are you keeping in contact with your host? Uh, is it more on the pause and you're focused on your, your thesis or your dissertation research and that's going to get added eventually, but we're not there yet. Um, hopes, worries for your future travel, research plans. How has COVID impacted you? There is a variety of ways that you can take this, shape it, make your own. Please know that you don't have to follow these ideas if something else comes to you. Um, but we definitely want to hear from you. We're we are all wondering what's it like for cohort two, especially cohort one. Our experience was so different from yours. I know that there's several of us who are like, what has it been like to have this worry? You know, or how stressed is this making you? Do you not really think about it and you're not stressed at all? Is it, oh, it's only stressful when I think about it, so don't ask me. Or is it constantly something in your mind? Um, do you feel like you've missed out? You know, these are questions that I have that I would hope that if I'm reading your Lorix blogs, I could maybe learn something about you as an individual and the experiences you're having. So that's really why we want you to start blogging now and not just waiting for your travel, which blogging during that is going to be really fun and really enjoyable because, you know, it's a new experience. You're going to a new location, maybe working with people you've never worked before with getting exposed to different cultures. You'll have more stories, I guess, to tell, but there is a story right now to tell and we wanna hear from you. With that, that wraps up the presentation. So thank you so much for all listening. Uh, if you guys are not comfortable asking questions on the recording, um, wait until I stop the recording, but while the recording is still going on, just in case somebody is listening to this in the future, are there any questions that you have for us today? Uh, sure, and thanks, Ilea, for that. Um, I know personally, I was in the category I've never blogged before, never even read blogs before, so I kind of not knowing what to expect, but um, going through this, I definitely feel a bit more comfortable with it. Um, I was curious when it comes to like drafting up these blogs and then sending them to you, you just want them in like a word file or something with some picture and y'all worry about the conversion, I guess, onto the website and stuff. Yes. Excellent question. And my recommendation would be send it in a word document and for images, you can put them direct into the word document, but typically the best quality images are going to be sent separately as their own file, their own PNG or J JPEG or whatever you're using. Um, so what I used to tell other, so the Australian uh, cohort that went right before COVID began, uh, I asked them in their Word document to say, okay, this picture's going right here. This is where I want it located in my, my, uh, my blog. And the second picture will go here and we'll wrap it up with this picture down here. That way I knew where to put it. And if you don't care, you know, just write in the email. I don't care where the pictures go. Here's some pictures, here's some words. Put it together, uh, whatever is easiest, but definitely, yeah, Word document and then images, separate files, usually best quality. Excellent question. Any other questions? I'm gonna quickly follow up with that one actually, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so I think I know how copyright infringement stuff works. Uh, <laughs> is there is there a team on your back end that sort of like verifies when, it, so like when I have an image, I'm gonna like obviously cite where it came from and things like that. 
And then sometimes I know I miss details like that technically wasn't an image that was allowed to be shared or something like that. Um, is that something that I, I definitely want to like go through the rigor of checking myself to make sure all of these are all these are taken care of, which I'll try to do on my end. But is there another backup on y'all's end that does that, or do you essentially trust? Hey, if if this is copyright infringement, you know he'll he'll take the brunt. But we trust that they've done their work on there. Another excellent question. Dang. Keeping me on my toes. I like it. Um, we definitely don't have like somebody that's really rigorously going through and checking. Uh, I would definitely put that to you guys to make sure if you are not using an image that you took yourself, that you are making sure that you are actually allowed that image um, for sure. But I do have to say when I'm reading your blogs, if it's an image that you obviously did not take, I will also be kind of sub checking of like, where did you get this image? But yeah, excellent question again. Anyone else? All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now.